Hey everybody, we're going to go over front dive tuck today and chat about what makes a front dive tuck great and show you different examples of people from the beginning stages of a front dive all the way up to a more expert level front dive. So starting here with our first person, uh, we don't get to see the entire hurdle, but what you do get to see is the angle of the takeoff. Well, first of all, I know it's, a, it's blurry, but um, other ones will be more clear. And you can see that his feet are quite far back from the end of the board. This is something at the beginning of a diver's journey that you are afraid to get all the way to the end. And therefore, you spend more time back from the bounciest part of the board and you lean to get away from the board. There's a fear of being close and there's a fear of being too close to the edge. So that kind of gets pedaled out as you dive more and more. But from there, you see you have the lean. He does a good job of getting his arms all the way up to his ears on the takeoff, but that lean really kills him. So he's jumping out, and instead of taking the dive up where the rotation won't uh, flip as much, he ends up leaning. He can only tap his knees before coming out for the entry, which then washes over because he's moving out so much. So that's the first diver. Let's move on to the second diver here. And the second diver is a little bit better. So. What you see is she doesn't have a problem getting to the end of the board, but what she does struggle with is driving down on the board and using the board to help her jump. She's kind of treating it more like a platform where she's not really digging in, driving down before that knee comes up, and then riding the board up. So that's why she stays kind of low. And then where she struggles on the takeoff is on that second arm swing. As she comes through, her arms stop at right about 9 o'clock as she starts to lean forward. So that slight lean plus the 9 o'clock on the arms takes her out, and she doesn't finish that jump. More expert level divers, as you'll see that they get their arms all the way up to 12 o'clock before the board even starts coming back up for that last jump. And that's really where you see people start to use the board, and they're jumping much higher, and it keeps the dive much closer in the end. Grabbing your shins will show a better tuck position and it looks cleaner and more appealing. She actually does pretty well on the entry despite being out. Her feet wash over, but it still stays pretty clean. Let's move on to the third example that we have. This person does a much better job of using the board compared to the first two that we talked about. One glaring thing here is his bent arms. You really wanna be swinging those arms through straight and long to get a more powerful reach. Along with those bent arms, you see his knee drive is low and he puts the leg down early. So you can see right here, that's the peak of his knee drive and he already starts to put that foot down rather than waiting until he gets to the peak of that jump to put his leg down. That will end up bringing the shoulders forward a little bit and that's what gives you a little bit lean out. He actually does pretty all right with it. And I've, as you come into that second jump, you see his arms actually get all the way up to about 11 o'clock. So you have a slight lean, and then he kicks out. Kick out is a little soft. But okay, let's go back here. We can watch his head position on the takeoff. And that is another key indicator that this person is starting to use the board. Because if you could tell before, if we go back, to her, her head, where she's looking, is kind of down towards the water in front of her. And if you go to the next stage of the dive, his head is up and he's looking across the pool. He's, he could be looking all the way at the back wall that we can't see, it's not pictured here. That's way better to do. Kick out is a little soft, as you can see there. You really want to get legs out first and then use the arms to reach for the entry. And then he just didn't stay locked out as he went in but another step up for, compared to the previous two. So now we're, we got this next kid. He's wearing board shorts, but don't let that fool you. He does a better job with the dive overall. The knee is out in front. Hurdle-wise, I'd say it's about equivalent to the previous person. He could do a better job of driving up and spending more time in the air before reaching down to make contact with the board again. And then the other thing is letting the board push a little bit longer before bringing those legs up into the tuck. 
So board work aside, when he gets to that last jump, you can see how he extends. His arms are about 11 o'clock as well, just like the previous person. He's kicking out with his legs and arms at the same time, which is a little less appealing to the eyes. You really want to see a legs first kick and then reach for that entry. This is where we get to people that have been diving much longer. One thing that can be improved here is his foot that is driving up with that knee is behind the leg that is supposed to be pointing down. What you really want is that knee to be up higher and therefore the foot has to come in front of that leg that's facing down. Other than that, he's patient as he's going through that hurdle. And his legs, so the board has pushed his feet away from the board already. He has left the board and his legs are still straight, meaning that he is extending all the way up through the board ride before he goes up into the tuck. He grabs his tuck great and pikes out to show control of the dive with his arms out to the side. And that's how you see before you had people coming out legs and arms at the same time. Now you've got the kick out and then he reaches for the entry. That's showing control in the dive. And it's much more appealing to look at when it's in a normal speed. This is slow-mo, so, but in regular speed, this will be much better. He lines it up for the entry and you can see him swim and pike save, which is nice. Very nice entry there. Now you might ask, okay, why is this one out? because it could move in about a foot, maybe foot and a half. And that's all coming from, like we were talking about before, the knee drive. When that ankle gets behind and that knee is low, it's hard to stay tall on the end of the board, and it ends up just having a slight lean on that takeoff. So right here, you would want to see him keep his heels down a little bit longer on the board and try and stand up a little bit taller. So that just means he needs to keep his weight back a little bit more. It's a little uncomfortable to do for the first time, it feels like you're kind of stuck and it feels like you're going to be kind of slow in the air, but it'll help pop up and keep it closer to the end of the board. Now, uh, this might be the best overall dive, maybe not the best entry compared to the other ones, but the best dive I could find from scouring the webs for front dive tucks. He has a very large leap into that last step which puts a lot of momentum in the x direction he's kind of jumping out with that some people can transfer that really well into a vertical jump uh, but it is definitely tricky he does a great job with the knee drive so you can see here compared to the last person how this guy's knee is horizontal with his hips it's out in front and his foot is in front of that that stable leg the leg that's pushing the board that's what I meant before. If you look back at the previous guy, his knee kind of like under his butt, and that kind of prevents him from driving up a little bit further. Whereas this guy, that knee is up. He kind of puts the foot down a little early in my opinion, and then he, he does a great job of extending all the way up to 12 o'clock. He has a slight lean, and his head's down slightly. He could keep his chin up a little bit more, and his, his gaze could be a little bit higher before he goes into that tuck. But he does a great job getting into the air, tucking, he has pike save. I want to give some takeaways for this spectrum of dives, all the way from beginner to the advanced level. Um, starting with takeoffs, as you get better and better at your hurdles, you'll find that you start to jump closer, and you stay closer to the board, you take it up higher, and you let the board push you a little bit more. With that comes less leaning over the edge of the board to jump away, and you realize that the board actually pushes you away and you just have to ride it up. If you take that same mentality towards a front dive, you'll find that your front dive stays a little bit closer. The more you treat your front dive like a front jump, the better. That's something that a beginner won't quite understand until they get more reps on the board. But if you're somebody who has a great hurdle and you stay tall and you jump high and you keep it close to the board, theoretically you should have a great front dive as well. And if you're struggling to keep that front dive in closer to the board, you might benefit from treating it like a front jump. You might get a little stuck at first, it might be a little scary at first, but if you treat it like a front jump, take it tall, high, and keep it close, and then get into the tuck, you might find that that benefits you. Another aspect of this dive that gets better and better as you progress is that kick out. The kick out is extremely important to 
start trending towards a legs first kick out that we highlighted. You saw at the beginning, the first person had upper body and lower body at the same time to get that extension. That time that it takes to kick out with lower body and upper body at the same time, it ends up having an effect on the dive where it keeps rotating as you're coming out. By kicking out the legs first, you can slow down the rotation significantly before reaching for the water. And it's kind of a double-edged sword where, oh, if I had more time in the air, I could kick out with my legs first and then I can get my arms out. People think that they're so low and that they have to get their arms out fast for the entry, but that isn't exactly true. You have more time than you think you do at every stage in the dive and you can do a legs out kick, a legs first kick early on in the process and start working on that core strength and that mind-body connection to get that kick hollow and strong. Throughout this entire series or this entire lifespan of a dive, you will see that your entries improved that, and that's probably because you'll be working on your entries outside of just practicing front dives and so that will help as well. I hope that this was informative and I hope to do more of these in the future. Uh, let me know if there's specific dives that you need help with and I will break those down for you.